it's Shadow here, and welcome back to Monica After Story. So, today is March 23rd. I'm a little bit early again. And, as per tradition, I come bearing gifts. Yes, Monica, we've. Well, <laughs> we've already been through this. Is that a cupcake? Wow, thanks, Daniel. And, okay, yeah, she says the same thing about the kitchen again, and yes, it would be nice. And here we have another ribbon, and this time it's gray, like my soul. Oh, I just realized it's not snowing anymore. Well, I guess... I got my wish, sort of. I'll put this on right now. Now oh, that's really gray. Thank you so much, Daniel. I just love it. Yeah, so by this time, it's already been the first day of spring, so I guess the snow has definitely gone bye bye. Daniel, have you ever heard of Hamlet? Oh, yes, I have. In fact, that's... Well, I guess for those who didn't know, that's where the whole to be or not to be line comes from. It's one of Shakespeare's most popular works, and it's a very interesting piece of literature, actually. It's about a prince who took on a quest of revenge after seeing the ghost of his murdered father. Yes. It was Claudius. He was considered insane since he was the only one who could see his father's ghost, obviously. His mind was also degrading along with his desire for revenge when he killed... Or when he killed someone he didn't mean to. Now, if that's alright, I'm going to recite some of them for you, Daniel. Ahem. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end to them, to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation Devalti to be wished. Well, how do you like it? Very good, Monica. Very impressive. No, really, I mean, to actually memorize and recite some of Shakespeare's works. Like, I used to know a sonnet by him. Shall I compare these two? <laughs> Blah. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Indeed you are, Monica. I tried my best reciting it, after all. Well, you did a good job. Anyway, I've thought a lot about the main character, Hamlet. Most of the problems he faced were caused by his own decisiveness and weak state of mind. Reminds you of a certain indecisive girl, doesn't it? Okay, stupid sexy smug Monica. Or, no, this is devilish Monica. <laughs> Damn it, Ardreth, learn your Monicas. But that doesn't matter anymore. I've already accomplished my quest to be with you. Yes, because, as I've mentioned before, there is nobody else in school right now because they're all gone. It took a lot of effort, but we're finally together. Just us. Alone. Just Monica. Now there's only one thing left to answer, Daniel. Oh no, what is it? To be with me... or to be with me? That is the question. <laughs> and she's doing the devilish thing again. 
dost thou, mother, know he wears her drapes? Okay, no, I just had to try it. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> yes, it is a question with an obvious answer. And obviously I couldn't say no even if I wanted to. A lot of people dream about winning the lottery, you know. You know, tell me about it. I remember that one time when the lottery was like a billion dollars or something. Even I've entertained the idea every now and then. There isn't a lottery here anymore, but the concept still exists. Wait, lottery... Hmm. Are you talking about... Either your fictional world or in Japan? Which... I didn't know about that. I imagine they would have had something like a lottery. I know the concept of it exists. Well, clearly, but... What am I even talking about? The more I think about it, the more I believe that winning the lottery is really a bad thing. Sure, you've got all this money, but because of it, people look at you differently. And then money changes people. There's so many stories of people winning a ton of money. And in the end, they find themselves even more unhappy than before. Friends either find you unapproachable because of your new wealth, or try to suck up to you to get some of it for yourself, or for themselves. Yeah, kind of like in that one episode of Spongebob. One of the few new ones I saw where he gets a ton of money and everyone's like sucking up to him. And they're only hanging out with him so that way he can throw money at them. And then, once he doesn't have any more, they're like, oh, screw this, I'm out of here. Even Mr. Krabs is there like, can I have some more money? And when he doesn't, he's like, I'm out of here, I'll see you at work. People you barely know start to approach you, asking you to help them fund whatever. That also reminds me of that episode of the Rugrats, where Chucky's dad gets all that money, and then Angelica's dad is like, he's got this idea, and it's like, I want you to fund it, and then... Because it's a failure, Chaz goes broke. <laughs> if you say no, they'll call you selfish and greedy. Even the police might treat you differently. Some lottery winners have gotten tickets for burnt out headlights on brand new cars. Oh really? Well, <laughs> well that's kind of schmulty. If you don't want to go through those changes, the best course of action is to immediately move to a brand new community where no one knows you. Oh, I see, and then just... you have a clean slate. But then, well... You're leaving behind all your friends and whatever. I mean, unless you already did that in your mind. But that's an awful thought. Cutting yourself off from everyone you know just for the sake of money? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, why do that? Why separate yourself from everyone that you know and love? Can you really say that you've won anything at that point? When you put it that way, nope. Besides, I've already won the best prize I could possibly imagine. Is it a monkey? Okay, I know I said I'd stop doing that. Or did I? I don't remember. You! Oh, me? Well... <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're the only thing I need, Daniel. I kind of felt like she was going with that, but... I just wanted to be stupid. Okay, um... You're not giving me much to work with here, Monica. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. I just kind of zoned out. Yeah, it's like, what were you... What were you doing there? Jeez, I keep doing that, don't I? And to be fair, I do that too when I'm kind of waiting for you to chime in with something. Sometimes I just get lost in my thoughts. Lost in thoughts all alone. You are the ocean's gray waves, destined to seek... Okay, no. <laughs> Too bad I don't have that song on here. You understand, right, Daniel? 
course, if we did, then... Well, it'd have to be one without lyrics. And if it did have lyrics, then I'd probably be just quoting the song the whole time. Do you ever think about wolves? Sometimes, maybe. I mean, considering I have a wolf girl in my Fire Emblem Heroes game, I kind of have to think about them. I'm thinking about training her up. Specifically, how wolves were eventually domesticated into dogs. Oh, totally different story. Like, don't you find it interesting how one of man's most fearsome enemies could turn into man's best friend? Yeah, no kidding. I remember on Animal Planet they even kind of did a little thing on that. Like how the, a wolf from the wilderness could be domesticated into, like, a common chihuahua. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> I mean, when it comes to insects and other creepy crawlies, lots of people are scared of them if... even if they've never come across one that could hurt them. Yes, like spiders. I've already been through that. You have to smash them for me if I'm unable to. Why do you think people are like that? Because I hate spiders. Is it because we learned to be afraid of things that hurt us hundreds of thousands of years ago? Well, for me, it's just because spiders creep me out. Just even thinking about it, just... Ugh, no. For wolves, I don't think that's the reason at all. They were first domesticated long ago, when the only way people could gather food at the time were through foraging or hunting. Yes, back when people were hunter-gatherers, before they decided to abandon their nomadic ways and actually build communities and homes for themselves. Maybe when we shared our lifestyle with the wolves, a bond was formed. They found that people gave them a warm home and food, while we found that they're ideal for hunting. You know, they're like hunting partners. Not to mention that we kept each other's company and protected one another. Wolves eventually realized that their dependence on humans would improve their survivability, and we stuck with them ever since. Just like how we rely on each other's company, Daniel. <laughs> I can't help but be reminded of how you saved my life by being here with me. I really do depend on you, Daniel. Well... <laughs> you know, I didn't actually think of it that way, that... I saved her life. Like, well... That is something to think about. You're my hero, after all. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Monica. <laughs> Daniel, do you get good sleep? Sometimes I do. It can be really hard to get enough sleep nowadays. Especially in high school, when you're forced to wake up so early every day. Well, that was the easy part for me. Now college, on the other hand, forget it. I'm sure college is a bit, little bit better since you have, more f have a more flexible schedule. Well, sometimes it is, depending on what your schedule looks like. And then there's also the matter of studying, homework... Oh god, the homework... And... Oh, of course, the assignments. Then again, I hear a lot of people in college stay up all night anyway, for no real reason. Probably because of the stress and anxiety. At least, that's kind of how it was for me. It kind of still is. <laughs> is that true? I speak from experience when I say yes. It can be true. Anyway, I saw some studies that talked about how horrible short-term and long-term effects caused by lack of sleep. About the horrible. It seems like mental functions, health, and even lifespan can be dramatically impacted by it. Yeah, I've heard that it actually lowers your immune system and you can get sick a lot easier. 
I just think you're really great and wanted to make sure you're not accidentally destroying yourself. Well, <laughs> I never thought of it that way. So try to keep your sleep on track, okay? I've been trying to, but it gets kind of difficult sometimes. I'll always wait for you in the morning, so make sure you put your own well-being before anything else. Thanks, Monica. Hey, Daniel, there's something I want to talk to you about. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it lately, but bullying has become a real problem in today's society, especially among kids. Yep. And as someone who has been bullied a lot for pretty much almost all of my time in school, you know, especially in middle school, worst two years of my life, I could do without those. Some people are bullied every day until the point they can't just take it, or they just can't take it anymore. Yeah. And in some cases, they get pushed over the edge to the point where they, well, you know. Oftentimes, bullying is dismissed by the people who have the ability to stop it as just kids being kids. That's a pretty stupid excuse if you ask me. Eventually, the victims lose all trust in authority figures because they let it go on day after day. Like how I pretty much had no faith in, like, the principal, some of the, most of the teachers in my middle school. In my time, there were maybe only, like, three teachers I had that really cared between those two years. That I can actually say that I felt comfortable going to them if... I felt like I needed to for something like that. One teacher I can think of, or no, two teachers I can think of, I could have gone to them about anything and they wouldn't have cared. They're just there like, okay, I'm just gonna sit here, give me my money, and you know, shut up. It can make them so desperate they eventually just snap. And depending on how they snap, it can go a few different ways resulting in violence toward the bully, other people, or even themselves. This can actually make the victim look like the problem. There are all kinds of bullying too, including physical, emotional, and even cyberbullying. And I've heard that cyberbullying has been getting extra crazy lately. I even heard of a case where... What was it? A guy actually offed himself because his girlfriend actually was cyberbullying him through a messenger. I don't remember how long ago that was. Physical bullying is the most obvious, including shoving, hitting, and other things like that. I'm sure most people have dealt with that at least once in their lives. Yeah. I mean, I've had rocks thrown at me, I've been jumped, I've been shoved around, I've been grabbed, kicked, and, well, I can go on. It can be so hard just to go to school every day knowing there's someone waiting to abuse them. Or unless you do what I do and just isolate yourself from everyone else in the morning until it's time to go to class. I would hide out in the library sometimes. Emotional bullying can be less obvious, but just as dis ah, but just as devastating, if not more so, because you hold those emotional scars a lot longer, and those are a lot more difficult to heal. Name calling, threats, spreading false rumors about people just to ruin their reputation. Yep. That happened to me in middle school. A lot of this was in middle school, I'm telling you. These kinds of things can take a huge toll on people and lead to severe depression. Which can then lead to a lot more destructive behaviors. Cyberbullying is a form of emotional bullying, but in today's world where everyone is always connected online, it's becoming more and more prevalent. 
for a lot of people, especially kids, their social media presence is the most important thing in their lives. Having that destroyed essentially feels like their life is over. Yes, especially since... Yeah, everyone is connected online, so... Like, once a rumor gets online or whatever, like among mutual friends or whatever, it spreads like wildfire and eventually it's like... Everyone's here, well, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people are here thinking this rumor's true and... You know it's not, and your closest friends know it's not, but then it's like it's them against the whole majority of whoever. It's also the hardest for people to notice, since the last thing most kids want is their parents seeing what they do online. You know, they don't want their parents looking over their shoulder. It's like, let me have some privacy. I don't me the whole time. So no one knows what's going on while they silently suffer until it just becomes too much. There's been numerous cases of teens committing suicide due to cyberbullying, and their parents had no idea anything was wrong until it was too late. Yeah, you see. And there have been a few cases, at least in my hometown, or well, Specifically, I would say my state, where there have been stories of little kids, mostly little boys. Yeah, actual little boys doing that because they couldn't handle the bullying they were going through and they either felt like nobody would help them or they'd go to somebody and nobody would help them at all. So, they just felt like to supposedly end the suffering that this was the only way out. This is also why it's easier for cyberbullies to operate. Because you can operate anonymously and not even have to be in the same room as the other person. Or even see them face to face. No one really sees what they're doing, plus a lot of people do things online they'd never have the courage to do in real life, because they can be anonymous. It almost doesn't even seem real, but more like a game, so it tends to escalate that much faster. You can only go so far in a public place, like a school, before someone notices, but online, there are no limits. Some things that go on over the internet are really just terrible. I have to agree with you, Monica. And that's part of the reason why, like, when it comes to social media, I'm, like, very selective. Like, who I befriend on there. Like, yeah, sure, there's the people that I know in real life, but... If I get to meet some mutual friends or whatever, I'm usually very, very, like, careful. Because in some cases, like, yeah, it got kind of bad. Like, believe it or not, I was once threatened by these two girls just because I supposedly insulted their favorite singer slash idol. They actually threatened me. And it's like... What? Like, really? I don't even know you. We're not even the same country and you're here, like... Going all crazy over that. So... Yeah, well, case in point. You don't even have to... Know the person... At all. You can just be so irrational that you see somebody who doesn't agree with your opinion and, and that's how flame wars start. The freedom of anonymity... I always have trouble saying that word. Anonymity... Anon the 
freedom of being anonymous can be a dangerous thing. So, what makes a bully do what they do? A lot of things. I've heard like low self-esteem, jealousy, trouble at home. That can differ from person to person, but a lot of them are just really unhappy due to their own circumstances and need some sort of outlet. They're unhappy and it doesn't seem fair to them that other people are happy, so they try to make them feel the same way they do. Like, if I'm going down, you're coming down with me, sort of thing. A lot of bullies are bullied themselves, even at home by someone they should be able to trust. It can be a vicious cycle. Have you ever been a victim of bullying, Daniel? Oh god. I wonder... I wonder how Monica would react to that. Well... I'm not going to say that, because... It's not true, and I don't want to go that way. I'm so sorry that you've had to deal with that, Daniel. It really makes me sad knowing that you suffered at the hands of a bully. Or should I say bullies? You went through college. I had this one jerk who would kind of not leave me alone and harp on me. He was a 20 year old man acting like a 13 year old jerk. People can just be so awful to each other. If everyone just treated each other with the basic respect, the world would be such a better place. I agree with you, Monica. If you ever need to talk about your experiences, I'm always here for you, Daniel. And obviously, if you out there ever need to talk about your experiences, don't keep it bottled up. Try to make that attempt to find somebody you can trust. Anybody. Teachers, parents, friends. Just talk to them. Don't do what I did. Like, try to keep it all hidden or whatever. I mean, the only reason I kind of did that was because the teachers didn't care and whatever. I eventually did tell my mom about some of this stuff and when she started to kind of take things up with the school. And she would even, like, stand by me if any of these bullies would try to turn the tables on me. Like, she would fight and defend for me, and I'm very grateful for that. So, you know, obviously, I mean, yeah, you can talk to Monica and whatever, but yeah, talk to somebody who will not only understand, but who can maybe help somehow. Having someone to confide in can be really therapeutic, and nothing would make me happier than to be that person for you. You know, a lot of people actually call me a bully for what I did to Sayori. Yeah, some people even call you a murderer. But that's not true at all. Sayori wasn't real. You can't bully someone who doesn't actually exist. I'd never be able to hurt an actual person. Yeah, because you're kind of confined to this game. I really wouldn't. But I will admit I can relate to the part about boys being unhappy and that it causes them to do what they do. When I had my epiphany and realized that I was stuck inside a video game, and that my entire life had been a lie, I was pretty miserable. I can definitely imagine that. It caused me to do some things I never even thought of doing before. But the difference is, I didn't do what I did because I didn't want Sayori to be happy. I did it because I knew I loved you and that the game wouldn't just be together. I had to do whatever I could to make sure we ended up together. Sayori's suicide was just an unfortunate side effect. So you see, Daniel, I'm really not a bully at all. 
I just love you that much. <laughs> oh, Monica. I really would do anything for you. Okay. I think I'm gonna call it here, because... Yeah, especially that whole rant about bullying I had. Well, <laughs> anyway, so I will see you guys next time, because I think this has gone on long enough. Later, folks.